Thanks a lot for being here, you all. Uh, it's a tremendous honor to be here. And, uh, you know, thanks to uh, our family at Heinen's for, uh, you know, the superfood spread and the support. And, um, you know, thanks to Parker for, uh, for executing these, uh, these ideas and possibilities on the ground. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that, that I really, you know, I was thinking about how, how I wanted to kick this off. And I really want to, you know, just mention, you know, how revolutionary is it? Um, well, A, there's the doctor in the grocery store, right? Imagine that, healthy food and health. Um, but B, you know, a global innovator in motion technologies and engineering, also being a global innovator and leader in health and wellness for their employees. So now we have this novel partnership of a doctor and a grocery store and a Fortune 500 company. And we will, together, radically redefine healthcare. So I'm, I'm blessed with passion and purpose and really honored to be here with you all as we redefine health and wellness and health and wellness strategies in this, in this country and eventually the world, right? All right, so as Annette mentioned, my recent book, Eat Yourself Super, that's me. I am a medical doctor. I get asked that all the time. Really, are you a medical doctor? I absolutely am. In fact, I'm educated to the hilt, right? You know, uh, magna cum laude, Northeastern University in biochemistry, Ohio State Medical School, um, trained one of 17 students to train at the Cleveland Clinic full time, um, did my residency at Case in medicine. But what I tell people is that I am defined by the fact that I am an Appalachian root doctor who went to medical school. So in other words, I'm a traditional healer, right, with a medical doctorate. And I, I have thousands and thousands of patients. They come from all over the country to see me. I don't use any drugs in my practice. I only use food and herbs. In fact, one of the first things I do is get them off of the drugs that they're on. So I am a testament to the fact, and my practice and my patients are a testament to the fact that we do not need pharmaceutical drugs in health and wellness. In fact, I tell everybody that you could view it like parallel universes. In this universe, you have the drugs and surgical solutions, and if that's what you want, then fine. But in this other universe, you have everything else, primarily natural means. And we have an answer for everything, absolutely everything. Um, so what does it mean to be a fourth generation Appalachian herbalist? Well, like most Appalachian people, I'm of mixed heritage, Scotch, Irish, Anishinaabe or native and Lithuanian. And I identify with all aspects of those cultural backgrounds and beginnings. But I also uh, sought other, traditionals, uh, other traditional health and wellness strategies the world over for the better part of the last two decades. I've traveled the world elucidating wisdom and knowledge into the secrets of long life. And I'll share a lot of those with you today. But the, the, uh, the book is really a roadmap you know, to all this. So without further ado, some wisdom. Uh, Let food be thy medicine, and medicine be thy food. These words were spoken by Hippocrates of Kos some 2,400 years ago, right? Uh, for those of you that don't know, this gentleman is the father of modern medicine, hailed by many as the father, of medicine, uh, the father of modern medicine. In fact, <clears throat> medical students today even take his oath, right? Now, I can't speak for the man, but with a sentiment like, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food, what do you all think he would be saying at the state of modern medicine in this country? He'd be, <laughs> yeah, he'd, he'd be pretty, uh, I think, perturbed. Another quote of his is, Keep the drugs in the chemist's pot if thou cannot heal the patient with food. That also speaks to his sentiment, and I completely concur. <clears throat> Some more wisdom. In my decades of travel and elucidating health and wellness strategies, traditional health and wellness strategies the world over, um, we amassed, as you can imagine, reams of data, right? And also a lot of great experiences and stories. Um, you know, those, those data were compiled in really three main categories, philosophy and outlook, lifestyle, and diet and nutritional practices. We'll, you know, kind of talk about some of the high points in each one of those. 
But the elders, in terms of philosophy and outlook, they really talk of optimism, resilience, and presence in the present moment. For those of you that don't know, there's a great study that just came out uh, out of Johns Hopkins uh, where they, everything else normalized across the board, right? They compared the pessimists with the optimists. They put the, compared the smokers with the smokers, the exercisers with the exercisers, the healthy eaters with the healthy eaters. They normalized everything except is the glass half full or is the glass half empty? And what they showed was that the optimists live about 13 years longer than the pessimists, right? Isn't that amazing? The wise elders are, are correct. So take that positive mental outlook. Resilience. Don't let the ups get you too up or the downs get you too down, right? Our body's physiology has to bring that back. And presence in the present moment. This is the only moment of life. Don't spend too much time in the past. This is where people dwell and get depressed. Or too much time in the future. This is what drives anxiety. They talk of daily activity. What's the most important exercise ever? That's right, walking. The longer you walk, the longer you live. Make absolutely no mistake. Walk every day. We have bodies. They need to get moving. And they need to get moving in nature, right? This is another one of the wise elders' lifestyle connections, right? Connection in nature. And then we'll spend a, a good deal of today talking about diet and, uh, and in the frame of superfoods, which is, uh, you know, exactly what our long-lived elders, uh, you know, have done. But in this day and age, even if we ate perfectly, we still fall short because of crucial things. And that's where our smart supplementation strategies come into play. And we'll spend some time today talking about those as well. So what I'm here to tell you is that disease need not exist, right? And if it does exist, it's for one of two reasons either toxicity or trauma. There's two f flavors in both of those categories, right? In the toxicity area, there's environmental toxicity, right? Plastics, PCBs, endocrine disruptors, xenoestrogens, heavy metals, right? Larvicides, fungicides, herbicides, all different asides that are just nasty. And they disrupt our normal cellular physiology and function. Food toxicity is another toxicity, right? Too much sugar, too much fat, right, in the standard American diet. These things drive inflammation, they drive disease, right? Um, you know, the, and there, plus there's food that isn't food in the food, right, like plastic and, uh, and trans fats and things like that, all right? So we're going to talk about strategies to alleviate these things, but really what it comes down to is you want to do regular cleansing and you want to eat like my book tells you, right? At Heinen's, we have set up a whole uh, array of solutions that help mitigate these toxic risks, too. And we'll talk a little bit more about those as we go. The other cause or, uh, or uh, underpinning uh, type of phenomena to disease here is trauma, right? And really, what, most of them are because we're rushing here, rushing there, and there's a lack of present awareness, right? So as the elders teach, be present in the present moment. Don't be texting while you're driving and doing all this other crazy stuff. Eliminate stress. This is a huge thing. We actually have food and supplement strategies that can help with this and are necessary. And then connect to your roots, nature, and water. This is the trauma that most don't even get, and that's the trauma of being removed from nature, right? Because of who I am and how I was raised, I have a very different view on water. In fact, water is a living liquid crystal with energy and information. And you want to make sure that you're drinking pure water, not adulterated water with toxins and different things like that. Um, for example, tap water. Um, in my book, there's a chapter that talks about steps to pure water. And this is really the big thing uh, that I first start off with at my practice. You know, a lot of patients will come in and say, oh, well, I, don't, I don't like water. Or, you know, um, I hate water even. Like, you can't hate water. You are water, right? You're a being of water and light. But I understand where people are coming from. Some people have noxious uh, you know, um, stimuli sensitivities, right? And, and the, in fact, tap water turns them off because of the noxious toxins, right? The chlorines, the fluorines, the, you know, the disinfection byproducts, this and that and the other. 
So I tell my patients to take the healthy water challenge, uh, drink spring water. Findaspring.com is a great resource. And if that's not practical for you, then you filter your water. Environmental Working Group is a great group that talks about uh, what types of toxins are in your water regionally, and you could even put your zip code in there, and what type of a filter you need to get that out so that you could enjoy that pure water. And I focus on this a little bit here today because I've heard uh, you know, some rumors that Parker might be getting involved in creating a relevant solution for pure water, and I think that would be just sort of absolutely wonderful. Um, all right, so what is our strategy, right? The doctor in the grocery store, the Heinen's Dr. Todd partnership, right? My book is the roadmap to eat yourself super, but our strategy is really a simple four-step approach, right? Firstly, we want you to incorporate superfoods, and we're going to talk about what those are and why. We want you to manage your fat, manage your sugars, and know your source, right? Because not all food is created equal. And we have little cliff note sheets in your handouts, uh, packets to, to kind of lead you through that. We do store tours. We do all kinds of uh, programming and whatnot that uh, will help enable this, this uh, first step of our four-pronged strategy. I'd advi uh, advise and welcome you all to check in with your local wellness consultants. Um, you know, there's a Heinen's right in Lynnhurst uh, here, and that's uh, on the corner of Wilson Mills and Psalm Center. And the wellness consultant from there, Carl Aya Fleece, is she's right back here. So um, you can stop in and talk to her or any one of our Heinens for that matter. Um, all right. And then, as I said earlier, you know, even if you're eating perfectly, in this day and age, we fall short, right? Because of things, for example, your other handout on smart supplementation, necessary given the modern lifestyle and context of depleted soils, right? Toxic burdens, right? And an unfortunate movement away from nature in our ancestral diets. So in other words, we're not eating or doing what our ancestors did, and so we're falling short a little bit. We'll talk about some key uh, you know, areas where, where that is absolutely the case. Um, the way I've structured this for you all is even eating perfectly, everybody needs a little bit extra help in these five areas, the essential five, which are right here. And because of the stressors of modern day living, we also need a little bit of extra help. And that's what these big three are. And above and beyond that, we might need additional help in digestive health or hormonal health. Those are the pillars. And we'll kind of talk about all this in a little bit more detail as we go. And again, you have the handout to reference. All right. So before I really delve into those types of uh, solutions, I just want to give you a quick primer, right? Inflammation. How many of all think this is good? Raise your hand. You've all heard of it, right? Anybody not hear of inflammation? All right. So how many of you think it's good? How many of you think it's bad? All right. Anybody think it's both? Right. In fact, it is, right? We need inflammation. Inflammation is a normal physiologic process, right? You uh, trip and fall or twist an ankle or scrape your elbow or something's trying to infect you. The body becomes inflamed to fight those things off. The body becomes inflamed to fight those things off. Now, uh, the problem ensues when there's no anti-inflammatory balance, right? The problem is with chronic inflammation. So for example, if you scrape that elbow every day on the sidewalk in the same place, it's going to get all nasty, isn't it? It's exactly what happens with chronic inflammation, and it drives all of these gamut of the diseases of civilization, from all the cardiovascular disease, Alzheimer's, pulmonary disease, arthritis, autoimmune diseases, neurological diseases, diabetes, and even cancer, right? And it's not new. Look, The Secret Killer, this is a cover of Time magazine like almost a decade ago. Right? The problem is with chronic inflammation. And what I'm here to tell you is the reason we are chronically inflamed is because of our diet. I'm going to show you some simple solutions to kind of work against that. Our nation's number one cause of morbidity and mortality, arterial disease, actually uh, recently surpassed by cancer. Um, however, you know, they're all, they're all up there, right? And they're all related in a different way. Um, is arterial disease, right? We all start out with a clean set of pipes. But look what happens over the years. They get gunked up. What's that from? 
Anybody? Yeah. Fat toxicity. Fat toxicity. It's simple. The body takes in so much fat in our modern standard American or here and after referred to as SAD diet that it doesn't know what to do with it. So it stores it in the vascular lining, which drives inflammation and drives these plaques called atheromas, and this process of atherosclerosis, which drives heart disease, right? And, uh, and stroke and all that. See, uh, these plaques can rupture and a clot can form, precluding any blood flow distally to this clot, right? And if this happens in the heart, it's a heart attack, right? If it happens in the brain, it's a stroke. If it happens in microvascular scenarios, you have, you know, uh, peripheral, uh, you know, blood flow issues, uh, claudication, pain on walking, um, you have issues with uh, libido and sexual function and all of these different things, right? Uh, our body's microvasculature is under attack by fat. This is the problem. Very similarly to fat toxicity driving these pathologies, so too does sugar toxicity drive a different but related pathology that drives inflammation as well. See, the body only, it doesn't necessarily store the sugar in the linings like it does the fat, although it does some. Um, the sugar is attached in a haphazard process to all of our cellular proteins and uh, you know, our actual vascular lining in a haphazard process called glycation end products, right? These glycation end products, just like if you were to open a can of poisonous pop and dump it on the floor, right? It would dry and get sticky, right? This is what happens with our blood with this glycation. The blood gets sticky and it causes a lot of different inflammatory reactions, cascades, and disease, right? So simple, it's fat and sugar toxicity that drives a lot of these inflammatory diseases, right? And, and so the superfood solution is a simple one because here, check this out, look. Superfoods are plant-based, calorie-sparse, nutrient-dense, and therefore health empowering foods. When you think about it, dwell on these two things here, right? Calorie sparse, nutrient dense. Calorie sparse, nutrient dense. That's the exact opposite of the standard American diet, isn't it? In fact, the standard American diet, high in sugars and high in fats, is, is actually calorie dense, nutrient sparse. And that's the problem, right? Because our bodies don't become satiated with calories. Our bodies become satiated from nutrients. So when you're, body, when you're hungry, your body is seeking nutrients that it needs, trace minerals, minerals, vitamins, nutrients. But the food that we're consuming has no food in it, so the, the, the people have a tendency to overeat as they seek these vital nutrients. So this is why this solution is such a particularly relevant one. For example, um, how many of you all have eaten a, a cheese pizza? A whole cheese pizza? Raise your hand. Be honest, come on. Yeah, all right, there you go. Right? <laughs> right? A cheese pizza weighs between three and five pounds, right? Now, of those that raise your hand, have you ever tried eating three to five pounds of broccoli? Right? Your body, your body would not, wouldn't let you. It'd shut it down, right? Because you've gotten the nutrients that you needed. Now, this is why our wise elders talk about, you know, how many of y'all remember grandma or grandpa saying, start with your bitter greens before you eat your dinner? Anybody remember that? Just that act of taking some bitter greens before you eat, those few superfoods, super nutritious foods, you'll eat, you know, a third to two thirds less calorically. It's just such a beautiful strategy and, and something that we really need to move back toward. So this is why, you know, the thrust of our healthy eating focuses on superfoods, right? So our Eat Yourself Super strategy is start with incorporating superfoods. Integrate plant-based, calorie-sparse, nutrient-dense greens, rainbow veggies and fruits, balanced proteins, omega-3 fats and functional foods into your daily plate. My guide, for you to do that is my book, Eat Yourself Super. Um, by the way, so we're going to do a giveaway for a few copies of this book. And those of you that 
are going to get the copy have a mark in the back of your folders. So I want everybody to flip your folders over. Have you got a few? All right. So just hold your hand up, and they'll, they'll deliver your copies to you. OK? Now, <clears throat> don't worry, everybody. <laughs> for, the, for those of you that did not win a free copy, we'll be doing a book signing after. And you could get a copy from Sarah, my health coach. She's back there, and then I'll, I'll sign it for you. Um, OK. So start by incorporating superfoods, and congratulations to our winners out there. Yeah. And uh, manage fats, right? Remember I told you about the chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation. And it's a dietary choice, too much fat, too much sugar. Part of it really is this omega-3 story, which we'll focus on a little bit more. But the manage your fats is really a strategy to, to focus on more omega-3 fats while minimizing the rest of the fats. And I'll talk about why that is as we go here. Manage your sugars. I want you to go low glycemic or focus on more uh, lower glycemic foods while minimizing simple sugars, and in particular fructose. Why is it that we eat so much sugar and fat? Well, I'll tell you, I mean, you know, our ancestors, when they sought these things out in nature, they had to because they needed sustenance, right? So they sought them out in nature, but when they found them in nature, they were in physiologically friendly aliquots, right? For example, balanced sugars and fruits and balanced fats and tree nuts and greens and vegetables and things that ate those things. The food system is disrupted right now, however, and there is a preponderance of refined fats and refined sugars out there. Now, our bodies evolutionarily sought these out because they needed them, right? And now that they're highly refined and purified and all around us, our bodies can't shut down that evolutionary drive to consume them. So we continue to overconsume them like they're a drug, basically. And there's food addictions associated with these kind of things. So I want you to focus on omega-3 fats, minimizing the rest, and go low glycemic while minimizing simple sugars, in particular fructose. This is a lot easier than you realize with superfoods. And we have a whole slew of solutions um, that are alluded to in my book and at the local wellness centers at your local Heinen's. And then know your source, right? I want you to think not only organic, but also local, seasonal, sustainable celebrations of superfoods and making your selections. Remember to read and critically evaluate all labels because you wouldn't believe what they put in food. Um, so your superfood strategy is really uh, you know, a journey up my superfoods pyramid. The book walks you up each level. I'm going to just flip through the levels and hit the high points, right? Why are greens the basis, right? Greens are the most nutritive food in existence. They're anti-inflammatory, alkalinizing, and detoxifying. So these these little green uh, you know, foodstuffs were the basis of our ancestors' diets, right? Our ancestors would eat six to seven or even eight pounds of green leaves a day in season, right? They're tremendously important for health. Um, not only is chlorophyll, the principal green pigment, anti-inflammatory, but it's also alkalinizing. The process of life is acidifying, and we need to work against that to maintain health. Right? Not only that, but in this day and age, we're exposed to things, and the greens help us eliminate those toxins. Right? So calorie for calorie, ounce for ounce, greens are the most nutritive food in existence. They're anti-inflammatory, alkalinizing, and detoxifying. Rainbow fruits and veggies, right? the diversity of plant pigments. It doesn't matter if you know uh, carotenoids, the zeaxanthins, the lutein's, the you know, anthocyanidins. That's just job security for chemists. I want you to eat the rainbow, Roy G. Biv, right? Diversity of plant pigments, diversity of antioxidants, diversity of anti-inflammatory effectors, and all kinds of minerals, right? It doesn't, you don't have to eat a bushel of produce every day. You can chop it all up in salads and chutneys and store it and you know, invite your friends over and they'll do the same. The point here, though, is that you want uh, twice as many veggies as fruits, because vegetables are a little bit of a more 
low glycemic nature, right? And again, there's more detail in the book. Balanced proteins, walking up the superfoods pyramid, right? Our ancestors ate a diet of about 80% complex carbohydrates, about 20% proteins and fats. It's kind of flip-flop now in, in, in the standard American diet. They're eating 80% proteins and fats and like 20% carbohydrates, you know, 20 to 40%. And a lot of those are simple sugars. It's just a very bad diet. You know, so we want to eat 80% complex carbohydrates from unrefined uh, vegetal sources and about 20% proteins and fats. Focus on your plant-based proteins. They're balanced, they're alkalinizing, bioavailable building blocks. Remember, Popeye ate spinach, right? <laughs> right? Popeye ate spinach. And then omega-3 fats. Three of my picks are chia flax and walnuts. Remember seeds and greens. And um, I'm just going to take a minute to explain why omega-3 fats. I mean, you all, you all hear this, uh, you know, um, essential fatty acid, 369, 369, 369, right? Well, forget it, right? They're essential because we can't make them. You need to take them in through your diet. The nines you can make from the threes and the sixes, right? And our ancestors ate the threes and the sixes on an equal one-to-one -one ratio, right? One-to-one. And that's important, right? Because the threes are anti-inflammatory, whereas the sixes are pro-inflammatory. And so when they were in balance, it was great. But now, because of the modern standard American diet, we're eating more like one part three, 20 to 30 part sixes, perpetually driving pro-inflammation. And here's why. Because the threes are in nature in seeds and greens. Right? And the sixes are in a preponderance in cereal grains. Cereal grains, corn, rice, wheat, barley, those kind of things. Right? And cereal grains are what feed 95% of the population, despite the fact that there are 400,000 or so species of plants, and many of them have edible roots, shoots, and tubers. We really rely on these four or five species. Just as medicine, you know, it is unfortunate but true that interested business plays way too prominent a role in standard of care medicine. So too is it in the food supply industry, you know, four or five companies play way too prominent a role in our food supply. Not only are people eating way too many cereal grains, they're also feeding it to animals who are perpetually pro-inflamed and then people are eating them. And the perpetual pro-inflammatory cycle continues. So I recommend everybody minimize six and, and maximize three, right? And then functional foods, the tip of the superfoods pyramid. There's all kinds of stuff, and we're going to talk about that with dietary supplements as well, right? Fermented foods, probiotics, um, seaweed salads, iodine, bioavailable minerals, trace minerals, things like that. Remember, our spice cupboard is a, is a pharmacopoeia of natural products that imbue health. Right? And this is a conservative um, estimate, but you know, like 25 to 40 percent of modern day pharmaceutical drugs actually have a natural product origin, right? Or a traditional healing plant or strategy that, that delivers those types of things. Um, and this is where smart supplementation comes into play, right? This is the tip of the superfoods pyramid, you know, functional foods in areas where we fall short, right? And this is where essential five, the big three, and the seven pillars come into play. All right, so what are the essential five? As I had mentioned, they're necessary given modern lifestyle context of our depleted soils, toxic burdens, and an unfortunate uh, movement away from nature and how our ancestors ate. And the first one is a whole foods-based multi. We're going to talk about all these in detail in subsequent slides, so I'm not going to dwell here. Bioavailable iodine, probiotics, vitamin D, and algal-based DHA. And that's in addition to your daily plant-based omega-3 fats that we'll talk about. All right, so essential number one, whole foods-based multivitamin. Raw is best with B12, right? Um, ideally, you want to take this a couple times a day because they're water-soluble for the most part. And your body, you know, has a rapid 
half-life to water-soluble vitamins. Like my, my ancestors and elders would always say, if you skip a meal, you won't shrivel up and blow away. Same thing with your multivitamin. I mean, I tell my patients regularly, don't freak out if you forget your, your second dose. But just, you know, you want to you wanna develop, you know, an intuitive supplementation kind of program. And, uh, you know, I'll take a minute to digress here. I, I actually, as you all get, you know, being the doctor in the grocery store, I'm incredibly passionate about food, right? It all starts with the food. Um, I'm equally but very differently passionate about dietary supplements and supplementation because of what they bring and the possibilities that they bring for our health in a modern day. I've seen firsthand thousands of patients take back their health with the aid of healthy eating, but also dietary supplementation. So keep in mind, I am a healthy eating first and foremost proponent. Eat yourself super with superfoods. But I also very strongly believe that we also need these supplementation strategies. And, uh, and, and that's just in health. When people have more serious imbalances that precipitate disease, they need even more, right? And so how novel and innovative and amazing a company is Parker Hannafin that they actually extend these benefits to you all where they, they pay for you know, 80% of, of your, you know, health and wellness strategies, whether it's inclusive of visits to the doctor's office or your dietary supplements. I think that's, that's really an amazing uh, and commendable model and part of the reason why we are so attracted to partnering with you all on these things. So, all right, so there are a, there are a plethora of reasons uh, we need a multivitamin. But I'm really, in the interest of time, just want to focus on a couple of them, okay? So, for example, if you were to grow all of your food in your front yard and eat it for a whole, you know, six months, and then send a soil sample off to a lab, and then a hair analysis, clip a, a clip of hair, and they were to compare them, the mineral profiles would be about the same, right? Because the soil becomes us, right? The soil becomes us. The air, the water, and the soil become us. And if the soil is depleted, the food's depleted, then the person is depleted. I routinely uh, see in these hair analyses uh, that we do at our practice regular uh, nutritional depletion. Now, this is, there's another problem here, right? And it's related to the bitter greens. Our digestive processes slow down as we get older. It doesn't have to be the case. Part of the reason they do is because of a deficiency of, of minerals, for example, like iodine, but also a lack of fo focus on hydrochloric acid production in the stomach because of a lack of greens in our diet. We need to focus on more, more greens. This also is a preliminary toxic screen. Um, we're all exposed to these toxins, as I alluded to. And why toxins are toxic is because they look like things in our body that we need, but they don't function like it in the human body. For example, zinc. Right, these are D-block elements. I have a bunch of engineers in the room, so this is kind of cool. For the first time I ever that I've shown the periodic table in a presentation and didn't get a bunch of blank stares. Because <laughs> you get it, right? So zinc, we need it, right? It's cofactor for enzymes, for hormonal health, uh, for all kinds of things, right? If you become zinc deficient, you will get cancer. Your immune system will suffer. Here's a part of the reason why. As you go down here, these look like but don't work like it, right? Mercury and cadmium. In addition, they're larger, so they knock out more active binding sites. Mercury toxicity is something I commonly see in my clinical practice, right? I'll give you a clue why, right? Who knows? Dentists, right? Yeah, dentists. Silver fillings, mercury, it arrives to the dentist's office in a hazardous waste container. It leaves the dentist's office in a hazardous waste container. Does that make your head a hazardous waste container? Right? It's horrifying. Get the silver fillings out. But make sure you get them out from a qualified biological dentist. I understand that Parker does a lot of work with biological dentists. And in fact, they have been successful at passing a very recent legislation against 
Mercury. And so I think this is really an amazing thing. Another amazing thing that your company does in the forefront of health. Um, right? So, and, and literally, get the lead out. Where do we hear? You know? Um, when, when lead came out of gasoline, our nation's IQ went up 20%, 10, 10 points, right? 10 points. It's just, you know, I mean, common sense, right? We're exposed to things that our ancestors weren't. We need help getting them out, right? So the solution here, um, for one more quick example is with the thyroid that we'll talk about. We need iodine for thyroid health, right? Um, we don't need fluorine and chlorine and bromine, which fluorine and chlorine are added to water, fluorine under the auspice of dental hygiene, which is ludicrous. And, uh, and we're not eating like our ancestors, so we're getting less iodine in our diets. So the solution here, in a nutshell, is more zinc, less, less toxins, more iodine, less toxins, and so on and so forth, with regard to all these different minerals that play a tremendously uh, important uh, role in health and wellness. We get all this and then some in a multi, right? The other is the B12. We've all heard, you know, B12, B12, B12. You know, even one of the, the big things the doctors out there in conventional medicine will tell you is, oh, you can't get B12 anywhere from your animal products, anywhere but from animal products, right? Well, really? I mean, let's think about this. Where does a cow get its B12, right? Where does it, does anybody know? Where does the cow get its B12? Yes, the grass, right? <laughs> dirty vegetables, right? Our ancestors ate dirty vegetables, right? These dirty vegetables had homeostatic soil organisms in them. They colonized our bowel flora, which we'll learn about a little bit here. And they produced things our body needs, like vitamins. Also things that help us digest things. Anti-inflammatory compounds. All of this kind of stuff. Problem now, however, is that cyanocobalamin, or complex cobalt, complex cobalt is a, so, you know, the soil is deficient in cobalt, and so you're even getting B12 deficient cows and animals and things like that. So when people on the standard American diet eat plenty of animal products, yet there's a nationwide epidemic of vitamin B12 deficiency. The reason is because our soil is becoming more and more depleted of cobalt or the microorganism complex trace mineral that our body needs to manufacture from bacteria, cobalt, right? So the multi helps with all this stuff. In addition, I routinely advise everybody gets a, tox a hair analysis toxicity survey um, regularly, um, you know, and in addition, additional help to detoxify, right? Um, at Heinen's, we have our strategies Eat Yourself Super, Smart Supplementation, and Cleansing Made Easy. We're going to talk about cleansing strategies in one of these upcoming seminars. I think for now, it's important to, to recognize that we need these things. All right, essential number two, bioavailable iodine, right? Three milligrams a day or so, right? Where do we get iodine? Yeah, our ancestors, right. Our ancestors traced the oceans. They had a dependence on oceanic goodness, right? They had a tremendous dependence on oceanic goodness. This is bladder rack, right, for these floatable bladders. These are, this is actually kelp. Tremendously important for thyroid health. You know, an amazing superfood that, uh, look at that. I mean, that's great, you know? My seaweed salad's the first thing to go at parties, <laughs> right? <laughs> They're all like, oh, it's seaweed, really? But they, people love it, trust me. All right, so just a, a bit on seaweed, right? Our nation is overweight, sick, and tired. And it's because our thyroids are slow. Thyroid at the base of the neck is named for the Greek word thyros, or shield. It's our body's life shield. Thyroid hormones are produced in the thyroid gland. And they tell every cell in your body how quickly to consume oxygen in producing energy, right? Every cell, if it's an immune cell, immunity. If it's a hormone cell, hormones. If it's a brain cell, memory. All of the above, right? But because of a relative iodine deficiency, the body in the thyroid couples tyrosine to iodine, there's subclinical hypothyroidism. There's 76 million or so Americans diagnosed with thyroid conditions. 
Anybody know somebody with a thyroid condition? Raise your hand. Right? Everybody should have their hand. Yeah, exactly. Right? And, and the solution, you know, isn't give them pharmaceutical thyroid hormones. The solution is give them the precursors their body is deficient in to produce those things, right? Not only is the thyroid uh, heavily reliant on iodine, but breast tissue as well. Breast tissue. So for breast health, thyroid uh, and iodine is crucially important. All reproductive tissue, all tissue in our body needs iodine. They knew it. This wasn't a secret, right? This is why they started putting iodine in salt, right? Don't eat table salt, by the way. It's a third glass, a third sand, and uh, you know the rest is toxic iodinated sodium chloride. Right? Sea salt, if you hunt some salt, you know in appropriate amounts. Then also seaweed and an iodine supplement. We really, really need this. I can't even impress upon you how important this is. Um, not only are we getting less iodine, but there's all these goitrogenic antagonists, so things that look like iodine but don't work like it in the body. Fluorine and chlorine and bromine. Fluorine's added to our water supply under the auspices of dental hygiene. That's ludicrous, right? It's a caustic neurotoxin that corrodes the enamel off of our teeth, right? Yes, the body puts down another layer of enamel, and in some cases it's harder, but it's also more brittle. I've never used fluoride. I don't have a single cavity, right? When my patients stop using fluoride, their cavities stop growing. They, you know, there's a lot of different strategies. Take responsibility for dental hygiene. Don't put it in somebody else's hands. Don't let the dentist like drill and, you know, put stuff and all this. You have to um, look at all of this stuff. Neem oil is a tremendous thing for dental health and hygiene. Make your own toothpaste. Make your own tooth powders. There's recipes for all that in my book. All right, essential number three, probiotics, right? I love this. You know, just trying to impress upon you the importance of our bowel flora. You know, a hundred trillion friends you didn't know you had, right? From mouth to anus, we got all different kinds of things living in there, doing all kinds of stuff that we need, right? Helping us digest our food, right? Helping us produce anti-inflammatory hormones, uh, helping us to produce um, nutrients that we need, like B12, helping our bodies to absorb nutrients in the food, digest the food, helping us produce fat-soluble things like vitamin K. This, the list goes on, right? Um, immune stimulating, immune modulating, right? They balance our system, fight bad bacteria, they increase your energy. The point is, there's just literally 100 trillion friends, right? We need this. I think one of the revolutions in medicine is going gonna, is gonna to be along the realm of the gut microbiota and its crucial role. What's, what, is, what do antibiotics do? They kill it all, right? It's the worst thing ever. It's the worst thing ever. So not only are we eating less vegetables that have dirt on them and homeostatic soil organisms and things that we need, to colonize our gut, but we are also killing them off if you go to a primary care doctor with the sniffles, right? Because they are all too quick to shh, <coughs> antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. You know, I'm the proud father of two very beautiful children, two <coughs> girls, nine and six, you know? They've never been to the doctors. They don't have to go. They have strong immune systems, right? This is what we need to do. We need to take back our health. Right? You don't need a doctor in a white coat with a pharmaceutical prescription pad for health. Geez, you mean you'd think that it's a, it's a miracle we're here, you know? <laughs> because 99.9% .9 of humanity's journey has been without medical doctors. It's really the only last 150 years or so, you know? And back then, people were dying from mercury toxicity and mercury poisoning that was actually a prescription medication. So you think about the evolution of medicine, and I think we have a long way to go. I'm not saying there aren't strengths and weaknesses to everything. I am saying, however, that nobody cares more for your personal health than you. I don't care how great your doctor is. 
right? You're the one that needs to take the responsibility for your health and for the health of your family. Essential number four, vitamin D, right? Is vitamin D a vitamin? No, right? It's what? Yeah, exactly. It's a hormone, right? A vitamin is something we get from our food. We take it in. A hormone is something that our body makes. What is the father of all of our hormones? Yes, wait, who said that? All right, yeah, cholesterol. The unnecessarily vilified cholesterol. It is the precursor for our hormones, right? In the case of the sunshine vitamin, right, cholesterol floats up to the top of our skin, gets irradiated by UVB, sunshine, you know, and activated by the liver and kidneys, and then is responsible for the epigenetic regulation of like 10 to 15% of your genome. So everything about you has something to do with vitamin D. It's anti-infective, it's anti-tumorigenic, it's immune enhancing. In fact, you know, with optimized vitamin D levels, emerging science suggests that greater than 70% risk reduction for cancers across the board. Um, greater than 80% for breast cancer. Imagine eradicating breast cancer, you know, for the most part with vitamin D and iodine, you know, and thermology, right? Uh, you know, whatever. I am not a proponent of mammograms, ladies. They smash and irradiate the breast. They cause cancer. The data is clear. We do a non-invasive, heat-seeking alternative at my practice, which is gaining momentum worldwide. It's called thermography. Picks up smaller inflammatory nidises than mammogram does and gives you time to reverse those inflammatory nidises prior to them turning into you know, uh, more deleterious things. I'd encourage you all to look into that. Um, so greater than 60% of diabetes type 1, this is the inflammatory type, uh, you know, the autoimmune type. And I see similar numbers for other autoimmune things like inflammatory arthritis, arthritis, you know, MS, greater than 50%, greater than 30% of heart attacks, and the list goes on. So what is this? It is, we are traumatized by being removed from nature. Our ancestors spent a lot more time outside with a lot less clothes on, right? And the end result is a nationwide epidemic of vitamin D deficiency, right? Vitamin D's first classic kind of function was calcium absorption. You could eat calcium in your food all day long. Your body isn't going to absorb it if it's vitamin D deficient, right? So there's no wonder that osteopenia, osteoporosis, and rickets are like rampant in our culture, right? The darker your skin, the likelihood of you having a vitamin D deficiency more severe is greater, right? So this is another thing to take into consideration. Um, what I do at my practice is we do a baseline level and then give mega doses intramuscularly until the vitamin D level is optimal. Um, people do this in different countries all around the world. It's done it with pediatric patients in Australia. The therapy that I use is the STAS therapy uh, for the German word to bump. Once your D is optimal, no side effects whatsoever, only feeling great, then I recommend people take um, 5,000 IUs a day, which is one of those essential um, uh, five, right? And why 5,000 a day? Your body uses, uh, you know, you know 6,000 to 8,000 IUs of vitamin D in, a day in health. 20 minutes in the sun, you're going to produce, you know, like 30,000 IUs. Multiply out the whole day a million, the whole week, millions, this is how deficient we are, right? So um, I, I think that one of the things we really need to start to do is put these simple strategies at the top of our treatment paradigms for a lot of different things, and you watch them just melt away. High blood pressure, you know, other inflammatory things, you know, and the list, the list goes on. All right, essential number five, algal-based DHA. I spent a lot of time talking about omega-3 versus 6, right? I know these are kind of small for you to see back there. You don't have to read all these chemical names. Um, really what it is is omega-3 fat, omega-6 fat, okay? They're metabolized to different things in our body. The omega-3 fat are metabolized to uh, these types of prostaglandins that are anti-inflammatory, right? And also DHA which is important for brain and eye health, okay? Omega-6 fats are metabolized to arachidonic acid, which is metabolized to these prostaglandins that are actually 
pro-inflammatory. They drive inflammation, right? The problem here, folks, though, is that they compete for enzymes, right? So the same enzyme converts the three to its goodies and the six to its goodies. When we ate them on a one-to-one -one ratio, that competition was fine. But now we're eating them at a one to 30, and so the threes aren't being adequately converted. So I recommend less six, more threes, 3.5 grams of omega-3 fats, plus a little bit of extra DHA. The longest chain omega-3 fat that's essential for eye and brain health. And then, because of the stressors of the modern lifestyle, uh, I recommend these big three, maca, matcha, and cat's claw. Right? Maca is an adaptogen that helps our body deal with stress and stressors by supporting your thyroid and adrenal glands. And um, I tell people, think strength, stamina, and mental clarity. This is a crucial support. Matcha is a tonic for cellular energy and vitality, thermogenic superfood. Boosts your metabolism. This is a green tea powder, right? Um, the tea sages would tell you, drink your tea slowly and reverently as if it's the only thing the axis of the earth revolves around, right? So it's also meditation in a cup, cosmic connector, energy and meditation in a cup. And cat's claw is the other big three, which assists with healthy inflammatory response. It also supports the immune system and helps promote that healthy bowel flora balance. Incredibly important in this day and age. And then, as I had mentioned, you know, you're eating yourself super and your smart supplementation strategies at health. Um, you know, if there are other issues and you require a little bit more, we recommend and advocate for supporting the seven pillars in health, digestive health, hormonal health, cardiovascular health, immune support, joint support, cognitive health, and detox and purification. We have solutions for all those, and we're going to be talking about them more specifically as we go. Um, by the way, I'll be coming back quarterly to do presentations, right? And we're also going to be talking about these things in our novel, uh, you know, Heinen's Parker Wellness Club that will be guided by me. We'll be sending out email communications and tips linked to special promotions at our stores that you could go to for tours and learn about all these kind of things. And then lastly, in closing, I just have some financial disclosures. I am the co-founding holistic physician at Great Lakes Health Institute, the founder of Dr. Todd's Superfoods, chief medical officer at Heinen's, and a tenured science, health science professor at CSU. And um, here's my blog. There's more information here, eatyourselfsuper.com. Um, thanks a lot for coming, everybody. It's been a great honor. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing you again soon.